friends and welcome to today's bookmas video. Today I want to pick out some classics to add to my 23 classics to read in 2023 list. I was going to mention some classics I want to read in my reading goals for 2023 video and that's coming out in a few days but I decided to just do a separate video about all the classics that I want to read in the new year and I think it's fun to go off of the year that it is. So 2023 I'll make a list of 23 classics to read in the new year but I don't know what to pick, so <laughs> we're gonna be looking through my shelves today and let's see what makes the list and what doesn't. So this is my classic shelf. I have some up there, um, I have a couple here. And then I also have some classics on my night table. But let's just go through these ones first and in the comments you can help me. I might make a list of more than 23 and then you guys can kind of like help me pick what to prioritize. So first things first, I've had this book for too long and I need to read it. I think I'm just scared of epic poetry, but we'll see. heard really good things about. I've read Evelina by this author and really enjoyed it. So we can put this on the maybe list. This is really short, so this is definitely going on the list. is the next Dickens that I need to read after Martin Chuzzlewit, which I'm reading right now. So this is going on the list. <laughs> Dombey and Son, I think it's this one, David Copperfield. So we'll add two, maybe three Dickens to the list for the year. I think I'm gonna add Jude the Obscure as well. Um, I know Kate Howe, she really does not like this book. And just the way that she talks about it in one of her videos cracks me up so, so much. So I really wanna read it and see if I end up hating it. I wouldn't mind hate reading it. I just, I'm curious. <laughs> All right, I think I need one more. I see one, but it really scares me, but I think I'm gonna do it. I think I'm going to read it in 2023 and I, I just need to do it. I just need to do it. I need to read it. <laughs> Tiffany from Beautiful Minutia, I'm looking at you. I need to read this book. <laughs> and then I might add Don Quixote as well. I think I have like 28 now. All right. So that's the pile. Piles, <laughs> plural. Okay, so let's go through this crazy pile and maybe you guys can help me finalize my list of 23. Like I might end up reading more than 23 and there's no you know, consequence if I don't read 23 classics, but I do have a very important goal that I'm gonna share in my reading goals video for the new year. And like I said, it'll be a few days before that video comes out. But to help me accomplish my goal, it's important that I read a lot of classics because I own a lot of unread classics. So I think 23 is a very reasonable number for me, at least just how much I read in a year, but let's go through them. So first up, I have never read anything by Sir Walter Scott before, but I've heard Ivanhoe is really fun. I don't know when this was published, but yeah. I actually don't really know much about Ivanhoe, but if you have read it, let me know what you thought. And then we have a couple Wilkie Collins here. I think I might have another one. Let's see, yes, let me just move some things around. Okay, The Moonstone is a must and I think I'm gonna buddy read this with Janelle in January. So I'm really excited because I've heard great things. Okay, so next Wilkie Collins, we have Jezebel's Daughter. Don't really know anything about it. 
and The Law and the Lady. So I think The Law and the Lady is one that I've heard really, really good things about, but we'll see. We'll see if I get to these. If you have read any of them, let me know. I'm not gonna keep saying that for every book, but if any of these books are books that you love, let me know because that'll encourage me to read them, so. Okay, so I grabbed Anton Chekhov, Five Plays. I've had this for such a long time and still haven't read it. And I love plays so, so much. I've heard that he is an amazing playwright, was an amazing playwright. Um, and this is absolutely beautiful. I love this cover. And this one has Ivanov, The Seagull, Uncle Vanya, Three Sisters, and The Cherry Orchard. So if you know anything about those plays, do let me know. I also grabbed Don Quixote, Spanish classic. I know nothing else. Okay, and then some Shakespeare. We have A Midsummer Night's Dream, The Winter's Tale, which it would be great to read it in the winter, and then also Hamlet. I have read A Midsummer Night's Dream and Hamlet in high school, but it's been so long, I don't remember much. So I'm considering them, I guess, like a first read through because I literally remember nothing. Next up, the next Elizabeth Gaskell that I need to read, and it's the only unread Elizabeth Gaskell that I own. And this is Ruth. Don't know anything about it, but I've heard great things. So I'm hoping I can get to it. Tiffany, Tiffany, <laughs> I need to get to this book because you seem to love Dostoevsky. So I'm scared, but if you, if you can convince me to read it, I'll read it sooner rather than later, maybe in the winter. So I don't know what it's about. Looks like a lot of moral conflict, murder, interesting. Okay, so Kate. I really want to read it just to see why you hate it. <laughs> and then The House of Mirth by Edith Wharton. I'm not really feeling it, but if any of you have read it and liked it, let me know. Chess of the D'Urbervilles. This is the next Thomas Hardy that I want to read, but there's also Jude the Obscure. And then I have uh, The Return of the Native. So yeah, I guess we'll see. I don't know. I don't know anything about this one, but I've heard a lot about Chess of the D'Urbervilles. So we shall see. And then 1984, classic dystopian. I really, really want to read this as well. Also by George Orwell, Animal Farm. This I could probably read in a day, probably a couple hours. So this one is a must. Okay, I really want to read Adam Bede because I've heard amazing things. The only issue with this copy is the font is extremely small and I already cracked the spine. <laughs> Sorry if that bothers you, but I've already cracked the spine so much and it's still extremely stiff. Like I'd have to, <laughs> I'm really sorry if that bothered any of you guys, but I really, really want to read this. I've heard this is one of George Eliot's best and I'm a little intimidated by Middlemarch. I have actually read Silas Marner. So I, it's not like I haven't read George Eliot before, but I didn't really enjoy Silas Marner. So I'm hopeful, I'm really hopeful. And then The Portrait of a Lady by Henry James. I read, what was it? I read one of Henry James's stories and I can't even remember the title and it's so popular. Anyways, I'll put it on the screen. I didn't like it. So don't know if I'll like this, but that's an option. Next up, this book I actually started this year, never finished it and I was enjoying what I read. I just, I don't know why. I don't know why I DNF'd it. But that is Deerbrook. It kind of feels like a Jane Austen style story, very slice of life, but the writing was a lot more accessible in my opinion. Um, so yeah, it was very easy to get into. I just, I don't know. I don't know why I didn't stop. I don't know why I stopped reading it. And then Gone with the Wind, still need to read it. Um, I have very, very high expectations. So I'll be very sad if I don't end up liking it. I think I will, but I just, I love floppy paperbacks. This is the most satisfying thing. Uh, there is Dr. Thorne by Anthony Trollope. This I should have read this year. It was on my list of books to read in 2022. Didn't get to it um, just because Barchester Towers kind of left me a little disappointed, I would say just a little bit. <laughs> um, so I was kind of like turned off from continuing with the series, but I will, I will read this. Then her, I really, really want to get to this. This one is a copy that I got from my grandma and it is the 1992 Reader's Digest edition. It is really, really pretty. I love it. And I grew up watching the 50s Charlton Heston adaptation of the book. So I'm really, really curious about the story itself. Okay, I already mentioned Dante's Inferno. This is the first in like the Divine Comedy, I think. 
could be wrong, but I know a few of you have read this and enjoyed it, but I'm just a little intimidated. Um, it is poetry and it doesn't seem to be too bad, but oh, I don't know, I'm just, I'm scared. <laughs> Another Fanny Bernie that I really want to read is Camilla, and I've heard great things. This one is huge as well, really small font, but I read Evelina by her. It was completely epistolary, like completely written in letters. This one seems to not be. And I know that Fanny Bernie was an author that Jane Austen really loved, so curious about Camilla. I also have Cecilia by her, so if you think Cecilia is better, I could read that one instead of Camilla, so let me know that there okay and then <laughs> oh this book it needs to happen it needs to happen i started it this year i didn't finish it i didn't even get past 50 pages but it will happen i was enjoying it i just i think november december i want to be reading like the comforting books i want to read Things that make me happy and cozy and this was not it. This one required a lot of my brain cells. So one day in 2023, I'll read it. And I have you guys to hold me accountable, but I will read this. I will, okay? Okay, and then finally, three Dickens books. And I am currently reading Martin Chuzzlewit, like I said and I'm really enjoying it. I missed Dickens. I honestly, he's probably one of my favorite classics writers and it's just because of how funny he is and like the dialogue between the characters always cracks me up. I just had a hard time with the old curiosity shop, which I read before. And so I needed like a bit more space between Dickens books, but I'm so glad to be in Martin Chuzzlewit and just, I'm loving it. So the next ones uh, in order of publication, that's how I'm reading them. I'm reading them from um, oldest to newest stick in this book. So I think, I don't remember. It was, I think it was Dombey and Son actually that was next. And this one I heard is one of his best. So I'm really, really excited. Um, but yeah, Dombey and Son. And if I'm not mistaken, it's David Copperfield after. So if we're going by publication order and I've heard great things about David Copperfield as well. And then Bleak House. But I love this edition so much. It feels like old old newsprint. I think that three Dickens books might be a bit much in a year. And if I don't finish Martin Chuzzlewit in December, I'll have to extend it into the new year. So I don't know if I'll get to all three, which is why I pulled out more books than 23 just to kind of have wiggle room, but I need your help. <laughs> Let me know which classics you think I should prioritize. I don't know yet. I don't know what I'm going to read. I'm also the biggest mood reader on the planet. So I don't like, you know, reading plans being so set in stone that there is no wiggle room. And I think that's why I like big lists because you can kind of like play around and, you know, pick and choose. So yeah, those are some of the classics and help me finalize my list of 23 classics to read in 2023. That's it for this video. Thank you all so, so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next Bookmas video. Bye.